What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten back at it again. First and foremost, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. I'm going to apologize in advance because you guys are probably going to hear a bunch of random noises because I am washing clothes. Chavez and I are getting ready to go on a trip and so I gotta wash all our clothes to make sure that they're clean and ready to get folded and packed away. But yeah, if you hear a sound and you're like, oh my God, is my washer or dryer going off? No, it's mine. It's mine. Any who's in, today we are here to watch Extra History's History of England. This is part three in the series. If you guys haven't already checked out parts one and two, definitely encourage you guys to do so. Also, if you're interested in other history things, I have like three or four, maybe five, but this point different extra history playlists i've got vlad the impaler joan of arc eleanor of aquitaine so definitely go ahead and check those out also don't forget i also do overly sarcastic productions so yeah if you're a history person or a literature person i got you i got you baby like i said this is part three of the history of england series it's called the devastation of france if you guys will remember those of you guys who are returning back in part two uh, England just just put a whooping on France. Okay, I almost said something, but I'm trying I'm trying to reduce my swearing, okay? England just put a whooping on France and it wasn't even like a bunch of like train, it was peasants. It wasn't like a bunch of trained soldiers or anything like that, it was peasants. France was freaking like dazed and confused, dude, killing their own people just to try to get ahead. It did not work. And so now everybody's looking around like, bruh, did fucking England just beat like the mo the best army in Europe. What the hell is going on here? I'm pretty excited to see what the aftermath of that is because that it is a victory, right? But this is the Hundred Years War for a reason. So I'm very interested to see kind of like how this turns out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, just we gotta pull, pull back on the Oh, oh, hi everyone. Hello. Welcome once again to the extra history of England. Zoe and I were just about to test the distances of the bow weapons David told us about in the last episode. Right. Cross you sure this is safe, Zoe? <laughs> ah! What the heck you two? I'm so sorry, David. <laughs> um, but without further ado, everybody, here's David Crowther of the <laughs> History of England podcast. Seriously though, which one of those went farther? Oh, take it away, David. Oh no. At the end of the Battle of Cressy, Edward was finally able to greet the Black Prince, his son. Yep. You are indeed my son. You have proved yourself worthy to rule a land, he said. In the Middle Ages, pillaging and murdering your way across northern France was clearly considered an appropriate father-son bonding opportunity. I'm dead. Edward marched north to besiege the impregnable coastal fortress of Calais. His captain, Walter Manny, escaped French jail and joined the fight. Damn! Edward didn't have the men to capture Paris and the French crown, but Calais was a prize worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. For month after month, Calais resisted and hoped that King Philip would come. They ran out of bread, so they ate the horses. Oh. They ran out of horses, so they ate the dogs. No! In desperation, they expelled 500 of the old and infirm, but in line with the rules of medieval warfare, Edward would not let them come through his lines to escape or feed them. And Damn. so there, in sight of their own families, 500 men, women and children starved to death. <gasps> and then they ran out of dogs. When even the rats looked scrawny, Calais gave up hope. You can't even feed them? You, you couldn't toss them... A couple loaves of bread, Edward? That's kind of fucked. That's kind of messed up. Now, Edward didn't want to slaughter the inhabitants of Calais, but they'd resisted his will. Mm -hmm. They'd defied him. So Edward prepared a piece of theatre. He sat waiting in a fine pavilion as six leading townsmen walked from the gates of Calais to beg for mercy. Right. Gone were their fine clothes and jewellery. They were barefoot in rags with ropes round their neck. They threw themselves at Edward's feet and begged for their lives and the lives of their fellow citizens. But Edward would not be moved. All must die. Damn. But then his own queen, Philippa, threw herself at her husband's feet in tears and begged for their lives. And finally, Edward relented. Here was the role of the medieval queen, to intervene so that right. the king could show Seven mercy lives. or generosity without losing face or appearing weak. Right. England would keep Calais for 200 years and it would be described by the French as a dagger aimed at the heart of France. Yeah. Edward went home victorious to England and proceeded to party, big time. But while he parted, England received a tiny visitor, a bacterium called Yersinia pestis, uh -oh. which had travelled all the way from the Russian steppes. 
Yesenia lived in the guts of a flea. The flea lived on the black rat.、Oh. The black rat loved the thatch and wooden beams of medieval houses、oh. and travelled the seas in merchant ships.、Oh, no. Yesenia was not friendly. In fact, Yesenia was utterly lethal.、Oh. When an infected flea bit a human, Yesenia spread into the human's lymph nodes and destroyed the immune system.、Jesus. As the body struggled to survive, obscene black buboes burst from under the skin, and so it would become known as the Black Death.、Ugh. Its speed was horrific. You might feel fine in the morning, a bit peaky at lunchtime, and be as dead as a nail by tea time. God damn. Forty-five. What time? Like you said that, and like it was really cute and very British of you. What time is tea time? Okay, is it is is that previous to dinner, or I, I mean, would you guys call it supper? I'm just curious about the timeline, okay? Because you said breakfast, lunch, and then tea time. I'm, you know, I would think breakfast, lunch, dinner. What time is tea time? Okay, sorry. Continue. Forty-five percent of English men and English women died.、Oh! England's population plummeted to two million. Europe's population God, fell by、damn. between thirty and fifty percent. The impact of the Black Death was profound and long-lived.、Mm. Prices fell. Suddenly, there were no labourers around,、mm. so lowly, wage-earning peasants had more power and freedom than they'd ever had.、Right. The lower population meant less men and material for war. Medieval man had no way to understand what had just happened to it,、mm. either economically or biologically. For them, this could only be the will of God. Edward decided that it was his duty to carry on as before.、Why? Medieval society was deeply conservative. It was the job of a king to protect his people, to make war, to enrich his followers, and raise the reputation of、Not、his kingdom by celebrating his magnificence. Edward was good at glory. It was a personal talent. In 1352, he famously created the Knights of the Garter,、mm-hmm. a chivalric order of 24 knights that still exists today. Its patron saint was Saint George, and in time, the saint and his red cross would be the patron saint of all England. Meanwhile, in France, the war became almost a private war. English captains raised companies of fighting men, archers, men-at-arms, pikemen, and went to France to win their fortune. Why are we? People are dying. Why are we still at war? Why are we? Okay, all right. Get your priorities. What, what does Ron say in Harry Potter? She needs to sort out her priorities. I think I fucked up that accent, but whatever. You guys know what I mean. These companies of men were called the Free Companies, and、mm-hmm. France was swamped by English Free Companies. Yeah. So when Philip died and his son John became king, optimism swept across France. Okay. Handsome and brave, the new king was called John Le Bel. Surely he would crush the English. John even created his own order of chivalry, the Order of the Star, Ooh, to rival Edward's、fancy. Order of the Garter. A little more dignified than a piece of underwear,、right. Edward's son and heir, the Black Prince, had other ideas.、Ooh. In 1355, he set out on what became known to history as the Great Chivalry, burning and pillaging through southern France, seemingly at will, unstoppable,、Damn. with utter brutality,、Ooh. death and disease trailing in his wake. John Le Bel's reputation already lay in ruins, and in the next campaigning season, he would have to fight. And so, in 1356, the English planned a grand campaign. Henry of Lancaster would invade from the north of France and strike south. The、okay. Black Prince and the Captal de Bouche would march from Gascony northwards to meet、Finally、him. Finally taken Paris.、But、this time,、okay. King John trumped them both. He appeared with an army that dwarfed either Lancaster or the Black Prince and cut them off from each other.、Ooh. Now, at this point, the Black Prince made like brave Sir Robin and bravely turned his tail <laughs> and fled. But near the town of Poitiers, out of food,、Poitiers. out of water, he was caught. If John had just waited, the English may have had to surrender.、Right. They were hungry, tired, and thirsty, and miles from the nearest pizza delivery area. How did he screw this up? Because th- victory is within your grasp. How did you mess this up? This is like a,、uh, you know, Atlanta versus the what, what was it? Was it the Patriots? Atlanta or was it the Bucks? Whatever. When Atlanta blew the lead, right, twenty-seven to three, and they somehow screwed that up. This is the medieval version of that. But if it was arrogance that made Philip fight at Cressy, John had no choice.、Mm. For the future of his kingship, he needed to make these English bandits pay, and with double their numbers, a complete victory seemed assured.、Right. Why, the French had learned lessons、win? from Cressy. At Poitiers, their main attack was on foot. Hand to hand, the opposing knights hacked at each other, and slowly the smaller English army was forced back, and they were in danger of annihilation.、Right. But the Black Prince was his father's son. When all around was chaos, he found a small mounted force under the Captal de Bouche and sent them to swing wide round the battlefield and appear in John's rear. And then, over the screams and din of battle, he gathered some men together, told them to mount, and cried, "Advance in the name of God and Saint George!"、Mm. The French were shattered into pieces, to small, isolated groups of、Shit. men, and the slaughter began. <gasps> The slaughter was not for knights and nobles. No self-respecting soldier in the Middle Ages would be daft enough to kill a knight.、Mm. The common soldiers and archers, fine. No one cared about them. Their job was to die. But killing a knight was 
against the rules of chivalry and good finance. Why? I don't think I understand that dynamic. I don't, why? I feel like you want to kill the knights, right? Like in, in chess, you want to take the knights out. What are you talking about? Then their job was to die, but killing a knight was against the rules of chivalry and good finance. Rather, you took the knight captive, oh. the knight promised to honour any agreement and not to run away, Got you agreed it. a ransom, and then he was sent off to collect it for you. Right. Simple as that. Make some Throughout money. the Hundred Years' War, the French and English nobility remained friends. They took part in tournaments, exchanged gifts, shared Makes poetry, sense, and yeah. married. War was a game, a game in which the death of a noble was to be deeply regretted. Mm -hmm. And in the crush and chaos at Poitiers, there was one pair that everyone made sure not to kill. A knight in magnificent armour with his 14-year-old son at his side. Ooh. The father was John Lebel, King of France. The boy was Philip, one day to be Duke of Burgundy. Okay. And amazingly, the English had captured the King of France himself. Damn. Within a few months, the captured king was the guest of honour at a season of tournaments and pageants in a London bedecked with flags and colour as England celebrated his humiliation. Yeah. The following years ahead were some of the worst in French history. The medieval state could hardly function without a king and France collapsed. English yeah. free companies descended like locusts on her corpse and feasted, burning, stealing, raping. Here is just one quote by a Frenchman. Oh, the loss by fire of my village where I was born is to be wept for. The vines in this region were not pruned or kept from rotting. The fields were not sown or ploughed. There were no cattle or fowl in the field. No lambs or calves bleated after their mothers. The pleasant sound of bells was heard, not as a summons to divine worship, but as a okay. warning of hostile intentions. Yeah. And so John agreed to a treaty. He had no choice. The Treaty of Bretigny in 1360 gave away most of southwestern France Ooh. and a massive king's ransom. France was on the edge, but that ransom was never paid, for John died in captivity oh, in 1364 no. and the tide was about to turn. Oh no! See, I figured out that a lot of my gaps in knowledge I mean, obviously it's just, you know, first of all, people can't know everything about everything, right? But also I am supremely ignorant of French history. How did France start, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know any of that. I at least know some of that for England. You know what I mean? I don't know any of that for France. So I might have to, I might have to do some further research. I might have to look into that a little bit. This was really interesting. Again, like I told you guys last time, I really love a good underdog story. And England did it again. It's like their specialty at this point. You know what I mean? But he did say that the tide turns. So we will see. We'll see how this goes in episode four. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this. Don't forget to join me for the next one. And also don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. And other than that, peace out, ho biscuits. It's skittin' lit.